Good afternoon, welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to be reviewing The Oracle of Shadows and Light by Lucy Cavendish and the artwork is by Jasmine Beckett Griffith. Now I have another deck by these same two people and it's absolutely stunning. It is the uh, um, Alice the Wonderland um, Oracle deck and it's amazing. They do their boxes up really tight. So I'm really looking forward to seeing inside this one because I think this is going to be even more stunning because it's all dark and gothic and sexy. And who doesn't like dark gothic, gothic and sexy? Try saying that five times really fast. So let's pull the sleeves up and get ready. There you go, there's your guidebook. Definitely see some dark gothic and sexy here. Oh gosh, that's so pretty. Ooh, the cards are in a little thingy. Now, in the Alice one that I literally have just reviewed, I'll put a link up in the cards, um, it was just loose. This There wasn't one of these in the box. It was literally, if I can put it out, it was literally just like that, and the, the deck was in like that. This is much better. This is more cushioned, and it makes it easier to store the deck when um, it's not being used, because I can just pop the cards back in here. It's got a paper thing, whereas the Alice one had a plastic one. It's just got a paper wrap on it, which is quite nice. I know that they're both brand new because they were both cellophane wrapped when I got them. The only thing is the paper one doesn't, well, it's more, more of a cardstock than a, come on, come out. I'm one of those people, I don't want to rip it. <laughs> I know, I know. Right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through the cards and then we'll have a quick look at the guidebook, okay? So, card number one, you've got the number at the top, you've got, I suppose, the title of the card if you like, and then underneath a little sort of hint as to what it may be. There's quite, uh, there's moon phases across the top by the look of things, or it might literally just be circles. Yeah, I think it's just circles, but it does look, and it goes all the way around, it does sort of at a glance look like moon phases. It's quite awesome. Pardon me. Lots of scroll work and all that lot. So, okay, card number one is Ghost of the Pumpkin Patch. Count your blessings. Now, in comparison to the other deck, these cards feel thinner. They probably aren't. They're not all stuck together like the Alice deck were. They look like they're going to shuffle really easily, actually. Oh, yeah. Oh yeah, much nicer, a much nicer deck. So it goes to the pumpkin patch, count your blessings. Fairy of the divine hand, intoxication, distorted view, overindulgence. Sea beacon fairy, guidance, but where will it lead you? A snow angel, oh, she's gorgeous. The signs are with you already. Out trick or treating. We're here. One of my most favourite films in the world is Poltergeist. Autumn is my last chance. Please don't lose hope. Poe, the time for change. To learn something new. To use technology and gadgets within wisdom. Very, very steampunk. I love her choker. I love everything about her, actually. She's cool. Grumpy red fairy. She's grumpy. Be your true self. So it's okay to be grumpy is what they're saying. Three witchy sisters. The power of three. Eclipse mermaid. A powerful energy shift. Dried flower fairy. Sweet memories. Winged seer. You see clearly. Clairvoyance. I am Kali. From death comes rebirth. Merry masquerade, glamour, intrigue, drama. Mildew fairy, clean up time. Angel de los muertos, transitions to the spirit realm. I really hope I didn't like totally fuck that up when I said that. Strangely lonely, holding on way too tight. The Violet Duchess, stifled, bored and stuck. 
Amara the Menihun. I have no idea what that word means. Aloha hearing. Fairy of the Highlands. It's time to be brave. Angel of Alchemy. Miracle. Voodoo in blue. Back off. Violet Angel. That's another stunning card. Breaking Dawn. Lantern Fairy. A clear solution. Sewer Mermaid. Your sensuality is beautiful. The Three Fates. What comes around. Strange Valentine. Love is strange. Death and the Maiden. Invasion. Boundaries violated. Dominance. A shallow grave. You miss somebody. In. Two little witches. Magical space clearing time. Lady with a Bosch egg. Ancient wisdom. A little eye poking out. I don't know if you can see that very well. Sea storm. Calm amid chaos. Dress of alchemy. Release your power. Faceless ghosts and the haunted girl. Ghost people. Storm Angel. Ah, that's the one they use on the covers. Collision of beliefs, styles, attitudes and energies. Mend a broken heart fairy healing from heartache. Candy cane angel. It's time for a treat. Carnivorous flower fairy. A tempting offer has a high price. A clockwork pumpkin. A wonderful idea. The aha moment. Excuse me. I yawn when I read things out for some reason. Angel of Time, you're working too hard. That's pretty. Nautilus Princess, powerful personal growth. Ghosts of the past, the past returns for a time. Pink Lotus Fairy, a time for spirit. Fairy of the green world, the natural world needs you. And Witch at the end of the world, an important end, a new beginning. Hmm. So, the guidebook. Just going to leave those there for a moment so you can see them. So, it tells you, you know, the, the, the usual there's an acknowledgements page, contents page, pages, introduction. Um, she tells you a little bit about the deck, why she created it. The oracle embraces those of you who have long felt you have no home. This oracle seeks out the strangelings, the in-betweens, who've seen it all and now wish to share their wisdom with you. If you're brave and ask off brave enough asking their advice can reveal a world of sweet beauty whimsical rhymes and steadfast courage so say well to fear walk through the veil and prepare to enter their magical world um, so it's got, there's quite a lot of reading to do in this okay she tells you about the beings within the deck there are ghosts, there are mermaids, there are ancients, like the being known as Lady with a Bosch Egg. Ancient ones who have stored within the knowledge of the eons. Fairies, witches, angels, entities, historic beings. Where are they from? What is the purpose of this oracle? How to approach it? What is the difference between an oracle deck and a tarot deck? Excuse me. Um, the simple difference, oracles provides, um, oracles provide answers or insights through entering into direct conversation with the being represented within the card and the message. The oracle, which is in this case a deck of cards, talks with you and delivers the message, then you do what you decide to do with the information and guidance you've received. Tarot is a form of oracle. However, over thousands of years, it has developed a formal structure that has a strong, strong tradition. Tarot cards are ages old. Some say they're descended from 72 pages of the Lost Book of Thoth, the Egyptian god of scribes, knowledge and communication. 
The book is said to have been burned in the destruction of the library of Alexandria centuries ago. However, oracles of nature and beings of mysterious realms like the ones within this deck have an even longer history. So, yeah, it's... Um, it sounds about using, using it. Um, some spreads, a simple Celtic cross, a hidden and revealed spread, the star of love spread, the solve a problem spread. What to do about leaping cards? Help them to read for yourself. And then it tells you about the card meanings. Okay, let's let's do that first one. The ghost of the pumpkin patch. Message, count your blessings. This adorable and flawed little figure is almost transparent, so still and quiet that you may overlook her, thinking you have just seen a wisp of mist, mist go trailing past, when really all the time this little ghost is silently standing before you, gently reminding you of something very important. That it soon will be time to harvest again, and the ghosts of the harvest missed in the past will come back to haunt you if you do not take your time and look around right now at all that is. She's not invisible, and she is always there. A reminder that the seasons turn, that the harvest must be brought in, and those who stay with the earth a while are not always here to haunt you negatively. They are here to help you till their work is done. This little ghost loves her misty home, adores appearing to you when you have forgotten your blessings and your rights and appears at exactly the right time in your life when you've nearly forgotten how lucky you are. The ghost of the pumpkin patch speaks. Something that is a blessing is being overlooked. It appears cloaked and almost seems almost invisible to you. You must stand in your field, that is to say your life, and look around you and see all that has been given to you again and give thanks for it. You are forgetting how much you truly have and how much you will have again and again. My time is the harvest. It is now your time to bring in or harvest the joy and love of what you have so much of and share your abundance. So the divination message, something precious is all about you, but it has become so familiar you can barely see it anymore. It is such a fixture in your life that familiarity has bred, if not contempt, a kind of blindness. The beautiful little girl ghost in the pumpkin patch asks you very gently to see the abundance all around you and to appreciate that while you are in physical form, there is so much you can enjoy. She wishes for you to harvest what is yours now and to also take steps to call in any debts there can be outstanding money issues associated with this card and share the bounty do not let anyone cheat you and know that you don't own a single thing in truth it will all pass through your hands but still ironically these things you have earned through your hard work are worth protecting they are not too small they are not too ordinary you have more material wealth than you think so please do count your blessings every day right it does go on in the next card so there is no reverse meanings in these cards which is quite cool I don't tend to do reverse meanings I must admit um, yeah, it tells you a little bit about Lucy Cavendish her web address and about the artist and that's it so my thoughts well it's a nice deck not as in love with it as i was hoping i would be um i actually prefer the alice deck that one i really really loved um i love the artwork in this but there was more at the bottom of each deck i suspect i will love this the more i the more i use it quite frankly some i mean some of the pictures are, are fab on this you know um my only my only bugbear with all, and this is with all oracle decks not just they're so big i get why you know because it's it, it's to fill it up with gorgeous artwork but yeah i'd be quite happy with a deck half the size give me a little deck that'd be perfect for me i have little hands and the stupid thing is so does the lady who created the deck lucy cavendish is a witch and she actually states in a couple of her books that she has quite small hands and she recommends you shuffle that way because you'll have trouble holding the deck that way and I do you know I can't get hold of it properly so I don't get why they make them so big I would I, I could cope with a deck half the size of that quite happily you know 
doesn't have to be very big, does it? I don't know why they make them so big. I'm just trying to find something that would be appropriate. See a Project Life type card. That would that would be ideal. <laughs> so mm, I don't know. I don't love it as much as the Alice deck, which is a real shame because I've been after this longer than I was after the Alice deck. But it is a gorgeous, gorgeous deck. So I will use it, and I will be happy to use it because it's sent to me in some happy mail. Um, it's about an eight out of ten. The cards aren't sticky, which the Alice deck was. Um, so yeah, it gets better points for that, but it does lose the points because it just doesn't speak to me as much. So there you go. Um, I hope you enjoyed this quick review. Thank you so much for joining me. Um, apologies for the yawning. I yawn when I read stuff out. I can't help it. And uh, sorry about the nails, but I can't bother to take the gel polish off, quite frankly. So there you go. Um, thank you for joining me. Please feel free to give this video a thumbs up. If you click the book down here in the corner, you will be subscribed. And if you hit the bell that then appears down below, you will be notified when I upload new content. If there was anything that I didn't cover or anything you think I should have covered, please do leave me a comment down below. And, you know, it helps me improve my content for future videos on my channel. Thank you so, so much. And I hope you have a fantastic rest of your day. Take it easy, guys. <laughs>